Hello everyone, and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous. I have been traveling towards the center of the galaxy all this time. I haven't made videos recently uh, since I started off from Kakandi again, uh, because basically I thought that the videos were getting a little bit repetitive, and it gave me more freedom to do more exploring if I wasn't constantly recording videos and being concerned about being interesting. So. Uh, uh, it's been a more relaxing time. I just basically played a game to relax, and so yeah, uh, we have managed to make it pretty far out now. I uh, will show you where we are. We are uh, we're just a stone's throw away from the center of the galaxy now. We're at 25. Here, let me zoom out. It's probably better that way. If you didn't follow the original Transgalactic Trek series, that's all right. <laughs> you didn't miss anything. Uh, I've been in a hauler all this time. I've been on the same trip since the last episode in the series. And I started off from Kakandi back over in civilized space. And now we are here. So it's taken a few months because I only do a little bit at a time. I've sort of made a sprint closer to the end here because I was getting a little bit impatient. So I've covered the last 10,000 light years pretty quickly. But uh, here we are. And our goal is at 26,000 light years. That's Sagittarius A, which is the supermassive black hole at the center of the universe. Uh, not the universe, the galaxy. Uh, the universe, if you want to think of it that way. Every point is the center of the universe. To somebody. Anyway, here. Now the problem is, even though uh, the supermassive black hole is only 225 light years away, uh, I can't plot to it right now. I can't click this plot route. Even though the plot route normally works a thousand light years away, the the density of the stars is so dense that it takes minutes to even longer, possibly completely freezing the system if I try and plot the entire route. So at this point we have to go one star system at a time. Uh, yeah, well, let's let's clear some of this out to make that a little bit easier for us. I'll, I'll only go with A-type stars. There aren't too many O-type or B-types this close to the center of the galaxy. There were a lot more out here, so once you get like within this ring, there, there aren't too many. Out here, it's like a solid mass of B-types and lots of O-types are available. Lots of neutron stars and black holes are around here. Um, pretty easy to find new black holes actually once you get uh, to within 10,000 to 15,000 light years into the galaxy. So uh, at least that's what I found. So yeah, it was good times out there. It's been pretty slim pickings as we got closer though. And uh, I guess that's because of the way that the galactic dynamics works. I don't know too much about it. We will have fastest routes and that makes the map a lot clearer. So I'm going to just plot a little bit ahead at a time, one jump ahead, because if I try to plot more than one jump ahead, uh, we tend to have a little bit of a problem. And so that's a little bit more than one jump range. Can we do that in one jump? Uh, I don't think it's going to work out. I mean, I know it says 26.74 light years here. It gets really sticky like this. You see, now it's got a lot of delay. It's trying, it's trying to find a way, but it's not quite doing it. Maybe I should, uh, and that's just, uh, you know, less than 30 light years away and it's got this kind of problem. But let me get F-type stars visible, if it'll let me. I think I'll just plot to this one while I can. Otherwise, if that continues, it's going to freeze the whole thing, I think. There we go. Let me get F-type stars made as a better one available. Okay, let's go with that one. Okay. So much quicker when it's flying just one jump, that's for sure. Okay, so uh, let me catch up with everybody, tell you what's been happening. One thing you'll notice is the, the star field isn't as dense as you think it is, and that's probably because of the dust that you see. It's blocking a lot of light. Uh, just a little bit further out, uh, in that belt where there's a lot of B-type stars, there are a lot of B-type stars. I mean, it, it, you can see all sorts of little blue dots. This, uh, this isn't quite as spectacular as the way it was back there. So, yeah. Uh, at some point I should do a video of how that looks. 
But anyway, here we go, and I'll talk about what has happened further. Frame ah. Well, let's get to that. Um, so I've been having frame shift drive malfunctions, and that's probably because I haven't been doing a good job of keeping my hauler intact. Uh, like I said, I basically played a game to relax, and that means that I'm often tired and get too close to stars, and and the net result is that, um, especially since I've been trying to aim for neutron stars, black holes, and the like, but also because I'm just really bad at fuel scooping, uh, my ha cargo hatch is in particular, uh, in particular, in a bad state here. Thirty-six percent health there. Life support is only forty-seven, and frame shift drive is at sixty-six percent, which is not bad compared to everything else. But uh, as you can see, e uh, uh, even though I've managed to make it this far. It's not entirely certain that I'm going to make it back. And that's sort of a big thing. But anyway, let's see if the frame shift drive works now. Frame shift drive charging. Okay. Uh, looking good. Three, two, one, and okay. Definitely a scoopable F-type. Let's see if anybody's discovered it while we're here. I haven't seen uh, too many discoveries. Uh, I even uh, found an O-type that was relatively close to the galactic center that no way I discovered before. So, looks like this is still pretty fertile ground for exploration. Okay, I, I don't think there's much that I'm interested in here. If there were some planets around the main star, that'd be one thing, but... Okay, so let's just uh, move on. Let's fuel scoop and then I have to replot. But yeah, I'd, I'd say everything after 10,000 light years was basically free and clear of people who had claimed discoveries. Uh, most uh, of the interesting uh, things were undiscovered at that point. So if you're looking to do some exploration, I recommend getting at least 10,000 light years out. Just want to make sure I'm safe of the star. You can see I'm trying to keep a respect respectful distance away from the star at all costs these days. Okay, so let's take a look at the galaxy map here. Okay, maybe we can uh, find a nice A-type instead of an F-type. That'll do. Alright. So yeah, I certainly have a lot to go back for. I've got a lot of discoveries under my belt. Probably half a dozen black holes that were unmarked, in other words, nobody had apparently discovered yet. Uh, maybe, well, definitely more than a dozen neutron stars. Drive charging. Many dozens of terraformable worlds. I mean, it's not enough to get me a really fancy ship or anything, but it'll definitely boost, boost my account. So, yeah, I mean, keep in mind that up till now, the only ships I've flown for any length of time are a Sidewinder and a Hauler. I tried the Cobra out, but I didn't have enough to fit it properly, so I immediately resold it. So, yeah, I've just been in a Hauler all this time. It'll be nice to get a slightly better ship. I'm probably going to be... Oh, we've got something that's finally been discovered. Eternal Wanderer, congratulations. So yeah, and uh, Horatio Kane got uh, got some of the planets and Kerber. It looks like uh, people have shared this system. Oh, one unexplored world. Well, uh, let, let me try and complete this system because everybody else has done everything except for that one. I know it's probably a crappy little planet that nobody wants, but uh, hey, while I'm here. So, I mean, the fact that I'm not recording videos usually has allowed me to do a lot more of this sort of, well, while I'm here exploring. So I've actually probably gotten a lot more than I expect in terms of funds, but that that depends on getting back safely, which is another trick altogether. Now, originally when doing the transgalactic trek, I wanted to cross the galaxy entirely, but uh, given the way my ship is and the fact that I'm still fairly poor, 
if you take a look, I've got a balance of 1.4 million credits. So yeah, and I want to boost that explorer rank too. I'm, I'm, I bet that uh, given the fact that I've gotten, wait a minute, uh, quite a lot more systems under my belt. Uh, how many do we have? I've been to 1,676 systems. I think I should be a little bit further on that explorer rank by now. Now I know it's based on how much, uh, how many credits you get from discovery. So, but uh, yep, want to get some credits. Want to get a better ship, and then we'll try and cross the galaxy again because that's what I do. Should do some trading too while I'm at it. While I'm back in civilized space, if I get to civilized space intact, I would like to do some trading first. Oh, I haven't uh, selected any galactic power or anything. I haven't done that that thing yet. I've been away. I've been uh, away from civilized space. How could I have selected a galactic power? I mean, I'll have to update myself when I get back there. And so I'll continue posting the highlights as I get into interesting points in my explorations and business. Uh, especially once if I get back to Kakandi safely. I plan to uh, go into Kakandi as my preferred port, but uh, I might deviate from that if I find a port of better convenience. Okay, and I'll explore this little guy and then we'll be done with this system. It might be just me, but my drive seems to sound a little bit more temperamental now that it's a little bit battered up. Probably just me. It's been sort of a gradual process, so I, I can't really tell unless I, once I get repaired, I'll be able to tell whether I've been really doing damage that causes additional sound. Let's see what these planets are like. Uh, just your normal. Well, it's got a nitrogen, uh, slight oxygen atmosphere. It's not too bad. I mean, okay, its surface pressure is a little bit high. It's got silicate vapor geysers. You could do something with it, right? That's just probably a cold little ball of carbon dioxide. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, well, let's plot the next star. Uh, okay, let's go there. I don't have track IR or anything, I'm just looking with my mouse as usual. Okay, here we go. I don't know if there's any particular rule about when I get the malfunctions or not. It seems like if I uh, keep it going in a straight line for a little bit, uh, it usually works out. So I did learn a few things based on the, the funds, the credits I got out of my previous exploration venture. That that trip only went five thousand, uh, yeah, about four thousand five hundred light years into the galaxy. But at least I discovered from that that I really want to find those terraformable worlds. And uh, I haven't just for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos, I I don't look at the forums. I I don't look for information outside of the game. So I've just been learning from the game itself. This irritates some people, uh, <laughs> but uh, it suits me fine because the more mystery there is, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I am an explorer, that's what I do. People who want to do combat, of course, have to, have to look up all the information to make sure they have an edge, but that's not really the game I play. For this little fellow here. We're about 10 jumps away from the center. Drive charging. You'll notice I do fuel scoop at every star that I can. And that's just, uh, I found that a good policy with the hauler at least. And also keeps me in practice, which apparently is very important. Four, three, two, one, 
Next time, though, I'll I'll probably want to ship with a larger fuel capacity so that I don't I could just uh, fuel at the end of uh, let's say 300 light year stint. So I'll just plot from refuelable star to refuelable star and take 300 light years at a time without uh, wasting time. Especially if I'm going to be going back to civilized space and then striking out again, I'd like to cover the first 10,000 light years pretty quickly. And so that's the kind of ship I'll be looking for. Something with a large fuel tank. Okay. Looking good. Let's do that ping. I'm pretty sure this stuff is now gonna be discovered. Let's see. Yep, yeah, DD. Oh, DD didn't do the. Well, I can't blame DD. These are not particularly great planets. And since we're so close, I'm probably going to skew them as well. I'll leave that for somebody else. I have had to pick and choose, I can't do everything. Okay, so I need to remember the exact coordinates so I can make it. So we're only 138 light years away. 25,900 it's at. Looks so like at negative 21 on that coordinate and 20. So we have to go a little bit further to the right, if you will. The frame shift drive malfunctions only occur occasionally, but and usually more often when I'm starting out. They're very ominous though. Oh, this one hasn't been discovered at all. Well, just goes to show you. I hate when they have the semi-major axis of these two around each other, but they don't say how far they are away from the star. I really want to know how far away they are from the star. You could tell from the... well, I don't know if the orbital period is around the other planet or not. There's a chance for this little guy, but I don't know exactly how far it is. It looks a little bit bluer than your normal ice planet, but anyway, I'm gonna move on. Okay. Alright, let's see what the situation is here. Unexplored. Oh, okay. Udu-udu. Udu-udu. Okay, Udu-udu got this one. Alright. And we have to replot. I have to remember, I can't just press N for the next system. I have to replot every single time because, well, we don't have a long distance plot available to us. So now, obviously, a lot of people have been to the Galactic Core already. It's not something that I'm the, by any means the first one to do. It's like uh, the standard pilgrimage for all explorers in Elite Dangerous. So at least I, I want to I want to throw my hat into the Explorer ring and say I have done this thing that everybody else has done. Perhaps I'll get. Uh, to do some more adventurous stuff on the other side of the galaxy in my next trek. And I also haven't watched any YouTube videos on Elite Dangerous, except for like the very introductory one from Scott Malia way back. Um, because I wanted to see what things were like for myself. So I don't know what the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy looks like uh, yet. And so that's a little bit of suspense for me. I've seen some interesting black holes, got up close and personal with them. And they have been uh, interesting little distortion of light they are. Oh, well, there's some interesting stuff. Oh, Princess Luna has gotten these. Congratulations, Princess Luna. And did Princess Luna do this? Okay, completely did this. Alright. So we will continue. 
Yeah, so I don't know what it looks like yet either. Which is good. I also don't know whether I'm going to end up uh, a little bit too close to it or if there's any other danger I'm completely oblivious to. I am indeed oblivious to it. F type star. Well, at least we've got the little wandering stars. You can see a little shaky star in front of us right there. Right next to the fueling bar. Oh, I saw two stars here. And who discovered this one? I bet everything's been discovered now. Yep. Metroid 4. Or oh, Metroia. I don't know. Mosky Man got these. Oh. This one's probably pretty far out, yeah. You're Sagittarius A. How far are we now? 62 light years, about three jumps. Well, there's no particular indication of the of Sagittarius A from this distance. I mean, somewhere in this direction. And it's not like there's this big void or anything. There's no uh, huge beam of light, but that's that's as expected. Charging. That's certainly something you learn about black holes uh, in this game. They're not really as... Uh, they're not really movie-like, <laughs> let's put it that way. They're not the kind of black holes you see in movies, generally. Four, three, two, one, engage. Then again, a supermassive black hole like Sagittarius A might be a little bit more movie-like, I don't know. We'll see. But in general, the black holes have been much more realistic, I think, and uh, much less movie-like. These are not your Hollywood black holes here. Really, the area close to the... Oh, this, this one is uh, new, huh? Okay. Let's see... Um... These planets are a little bit too close to that star to be any good. But maybe I can just explore the star and be done with that. Uh, okay, 8,000. We could probably just ping it from here. Let me just get some fuel. Well, there's Sagittarius A. How far now? Just two jumps. That should be within range, isn't it? Barely. Uh, but it doesn't agree. Okay. I don't know why it has this problem close to the center, but I'm not going to argue with it. Come on, plot to this one instead. Plot to this one instead, please. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I mean, when I say I don't know why it has a strong close to the center is, um, I don't know if the density of stars is the only cause of that. I don't know. By the way, if you're out exploring, there are a lot of available neutron stars. If you want to, uh, th those are good things to try and ping. I left a lot of neutron stars behind just on my path, just because I couldn't hit all of them. Wanted to get uh, some of them on the way back, but considering the state of my ship, I'm, I probably want to just get back as quickly as possible to repair. So, Erland. And these other ones are unexplored. Okay, well, the next jump should be it. Let me just fuel up. Alright, so can we make it in one jump now? Yep, Sagittarius A. Well... Here it goes. Frameshift drive charging. Oh, I have expected it to tell me the frameshift drive is malfunctioning right there. 
That would have been uh, that would have been a nice touch. Let's put it that way. Okay, here we are. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Let's get let's get some more distance. Well, no, uh, I don't know how far I need to be. Okay, well, let's ping it. Hey, let's see if there are any plants around it. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Looks like we're 7.6 days away at this speed, so I think I can keep this distance. Is there something? There's, there is something around it. I think they're like six stars orbiting Sagittarius A. Oh, there's a um, class B discovered by Zulu Romeo. And who discovered this one? Zulu Romeo. Zulu Romeo, the first to get discovery credit for, for the center of the galaxy. Very good. So that one's pretty far out. I've got plenty of class B exploration done already. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna sit here a little bit. I, I, I'll probably park it here for at least... Uh, I'll park it here for the end of the episode. Uh, continuing my standard procedure of uh, parking it at a very interesting spot with every episode. Look at that. I bet moving around would distort things, uh, show the distortion of things a little bit better. You can see the Milky Way is... I don't know if that's a Milky Way or just some dust uh, dust cloud around it. It's moving with respect to the background though, whatever it is. It looks like the Milky Way, but... So these guys seem to be quite normal. If I move in this direction a little bit... Oh, uh, we, we see a little horizon there. In the upper right hand corner, can you see those stars moving like that? Yeah. Don't know if it's proper to call that the event horizon. Probably. Wow. Ooh. I wonder what causes that specifically, that, that little effect at the center there. I mean, I understand the distortion of light from the stars, that's... But, what, what exactly causes this effect. Is that something that we know from physics or is that just really an effect that they wanted to add for the show of it? I don't know. I'm sure there, there were physicists in consultation on all this but obviously nobody has seen a black hole like this this close. Aw oh, come on. Right when I'm enjoying it? Okay, well, hold on. Okay, so after a substantial internet service interruption, I am back here at the center of the galaxy. But I think I'm just gonna leave it here for now. I'll probably uh, get myself a safe distance away from uh, the black hole and park it until I can start on my journey back. And so the next video I post in Elite Dangerous will probably be uh, when I'm getting close to civilized space and we'll see whether I can make it back in one piece and that'll be the plot of that otherwise I'm not going to uh, detail the trip back I probably won't do too much exploring on the way back I do want to get back as quickly as possible with the exploring I've done on the way out here so yeah I think that's the plan though of course if I hit a particularly interesting system by happenstance I will see what I can do with that that is the plan, and I'll catch you next time I post an Elite Dangerous video, and hopefully we'll be able to make it back in one piece despite the fact that my ship is currently, well, it's less than less than half of its original health in some respects, so it's going to be a questionable situation. Alright, so with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.